So, third time lucky. Let's put that on time intervals. Get rid of the map. And are we on board with... Who are we on board with? Not kill. There we go. Tell you what, should we actually get on board with not kill? Because we've seen how bad the replay cameras are from the start. So, at any point soon, we might get a race start. They're all revving their engines. Got no reference point. I'm trying to build tension. There's going to be a crescendo in a minute. <laughs> I can't get... There we go! And there we go! And we're away. Looks like a much better launch off the line from Knockhill on this particular occasion. Slotting right in behind Hydra and sitting on his bumper. What we got going on behind then immediately having a look back at DDM drifting. Nudging the back of Knockhill. Still trying to make a move on this early lap once again. He's done it once. Maybe he can do it again. Looking to the outside, maybe up the uphill, but that's never really going to be a likely place for a move and drifting. Living up to his name there with the rear end stepping out. And uh, it's DDM drifting, not DDM rallycross. Get it back on the track, please. As he falls under attack. It's Leachy with a fantastic start this time, gaining, I believe, two positions on the first lap. Let's jump back into that battle slightly behind us and get back into the replay cameras. So I'm pretty sure that, say, we saw DDM drifting starting fourth. I think it was uh, CCX Rai starting fifth. So Leachy moving up at least two positions in the opening few corners. A very good start. Drifting on the attack to get his P4 back already though but he's going to be on the outside when they come into the very tight hairpin and he's tucks in behind on the apex is he going for a cut back line spinning those wheels up as I expect most people will be coming out of an exit of a very very tight hairpin there but uh, it's status quo as they approach the S's for the first time and I think that was someone slightly touching the grass in the background uh, who's that in P8 I think was going very sideways uh, through one of the S's uh, can we see in the back no, no we can't quite still on board with DDM drifting then as we come towards the end of the first lap. Um, I just realised I haven't paid attention. Which, well, I don't know which layout we're <laughs> Main full layout. Okay, there we go. And we've got a side-by-side -side for P8 and 9 with SLS Nathan and I'm guessing PSUK JP. Let's see if we can catch the end of that battle. N no, because that... What is this camera angle? There we go. Nathan and JP still side-by-side. -side. Let's jump on board with JP on the inside going into Turn 1. It's a good place to be if you can clear the guy on your outside but you don't want to still be having an overlap by the time you get into this turn two. And uh, JP has managed to clear Nathan by the time they turned in and has held the position. Nice bit of battle. And that would have been a nice if we could see a little bit more of it. Let's jump back up to Rye, see if there's anything going on with these guys. Say, so Leachy having a very, very good round. I don't think he's... Oh, I've got to think now. I haven't got an encyclopedic knowledge of everyone's previous race results. But I'm pretty sure this is... If, if Leachy could manage on... Just hang on to fourth. It would at least be his equal best result. I'm trying to think of who we've had on the podium in the previous races. Drifting not with the best run out of the uh, long left-hander in the middle sector. Under pressure from the guy we're on board with, CCX Rai, a little bit into the hairpin. Once again, uh, Drifting taking that very inside line that we take, saw him take on the previous lap. Uh, this time in defence rather than attack. And he's dropped back from Leachy in fourth and seems to be more worried about... Um, about Rye behind him. Hang on. That's the GP chicane. I like the GP chicane, but I'm sure the GP layout has the other hairpin. This hairpin. What? Yeah, this hairpin. Oh, rather than the extended hairpin. Maybe it's just, it's just further down than I thought. Okay, that's a shame, because I prefer the other hairpin. Um... I know what I'm talking about, so don't worry. <laughs> You're just listening to me ramble. At least one of us knows what's going on. Uh, let's have a quick look at the front now. We've got Hydra and Fergs very close together in first and second as we ride on board. And then we've got SLS Knock Hill uh, not too far away either in third. So again, if we jump towards the... Re not the... Re yeah, replay cameras. There we go. Had me confused for a little bit there, jumping onto his bonnet. And tell you what, it's very much three for the lead at the moment. Uh, last, as we jumped on board with Hydra, we saw him trying to attack Mr. Fergs. But since then, Knockhill seems to have closed up the gap ever so slightly. And again, Hydra's on the on the attack, going into the long left hand of the middle sector. Is there room there? I, was there contact? Was Hydra slightly on the grass? That's very tight. And, we, and I was about to say, in terms of attacking and defending from Hydra, from Fergs to Knockhill, it's very, very small margins, like a car length here, half a car length there. But uh, Hydra very much, and they're three wide for the lead! Knockhill going up the inside of Hydra while he was going to go around the outside of Hergs. And is Knockhill going to get both of them? Knockhill on the left-hand side into the S's. They're side by side with Mr. Fergs for the lead now. And they're still side by side as they go into the GP chicane. 
Who's going to come out on top of this? It's still side by side. It's like they're welded together. And now they're both running, going to be running wide on the exit of the chicane. And that brings Hydra back into play. As, uh, oh, crikey, he's got a much better run as they go down into the hairpin. And it's three for the lead again. Oh, he's had to back out of it, I think. This is the worst camera angle on Forza. Show me what's going on at the hairpin. <laughs> there we go. There they are over in the distance. What is that? Hydra has somehow got his place back from Knockhill, and he's back on the attack again already on Fergs for the lead. I think he's got his nose. No, he hasn't quite got his nose clear at the moment. He's got a bit the outside for turn two. He's got Knockhill right there as well. Is not, can Knockhill follow him around the outside? Is that going to be a thing? Not for the moment. Hydra now has the inside, though, for the left-hander. It's going to be outside as they crest the hill. Are they going to keep it on the track? Oh, mostly not kill slightly running off wide and then now side by side with Mr. Fergs for P2. Hydra has cleared himself and got a couple of car lengths already in first position. So I'm going to quickly swap the camera. No, I'm not going to. Yes, I am going to swap the camera back. I didn't want to go through the black screen, but the last thing I want to do is ride on board with Hydra and not see what's going on here. Fergs hanging it all the way around the outside of the long left hander in the middle sector. He's, it does that mean he can get a better run? No! Not kills cleared him for P2. Not a very good couple of laps for Mr. Ferg, although he hacks round the outside now. We saw Knockhill pull that off to a great effect on the previous lap, but uh, Mr. Ferg's unable to replicate that and has dropped from first to third in the previous couple of laps. And now we've got more side-by-side -side action. I think that was drifting going past Leachy in the background as they entered the S's. And yep, DDM drifted is up to P, back up to P4, which was where he started. And then we've got Leachy and Knockhill, and it's one hell of a congested top six, I think this is now. And uh, maybe I'll quickly take a little bit of a breather. <laughs> oh, no, maybe not, because drifting on the defence, Leachy having a slight overlap as they entered the hairpin that we just can't see. Come on, Forza. What is this camera angle? There we go, in the distance, drifting. Has, is, yeah, he's, he's at least stopped Leachy's overlap, but Leachy very much looking to be back on the attack, wanting that P4 back that he took on lap one. Let's get on board with him for a little bit and uh, see where it is that he might be quicker. And we see we've got Rai just behind in seventh, in sixth. Uh, PSUK Forza not too far behind in seventh, but it, it does seem to be a breakaway top half, excuse me, top half of the field in the opening five laps or so. Oh, that's not a good sign, I've just had, <laughs> just had the beep from my headset. Please don't be running out of batteries midstream. Um, actually, I can I can rectify that and just plug it in all the insightful commentary you get when you watch a jam stream oh right Leachy is he with is he in diveable distance 40 feet it's close enough for drifting to decide to go defensive Leachy might be able to set up on a better exit maybe interesting I think drifting is the only person I've seen consistently take a, a narrower exit from the very tight hairpin so far in this race obviously we've seen the guys in the top three try it when they were three wide but I mean, you kind of have to when you're three wide because you just don't get much choice in the matter. Oh, Leachy, much uh, more, more aggressive on the way into that chicane there. And he sort of didn't seem to lose anything on the exit. So maybe one place that we can uh, really see that he might be slightly quicker than the car in front. And here we go. Finally being able to actually see this hairpin that the Forza replays just completely ignore. Because why wouldn't you? Um... Right, so yeah, settle, settle down a little bit now. Maybe we'll go for a little bit of a run through. Um, so we know most of the uh, top half of the field. We've got Hydra out in front ahead of Knock Hill, Mr. Fergs, Drifting and Rai. You can see all five of those guys on stream at the moment. Um, if we look behind, we can see CCX Rai in P6. We'll jump to P7 where we've got PSUK Forza in a race of his own at the moment. Probably in the most free air uh, of anyone on the tyre field, I would hazard a guess. We've got PSUK JP and SLS Nathan fighting over P8. Just as we get here, Nathan round the outside at the top of the hill. There was a little bit of contact. Can he hang around the outside here? That's not really the usual place to do so, but there's contact. And uh, it forces JP slightly wide. And Nathan uses that to cut back up the inside. And now Andy's in the mix. Can we swap to an exterior cam and see if we can see more of this battle? Andy hanging out in P10 at the moment. Wants to get into those single-digit positions. And we've got another car in P11. Is it Organic Beanpole hovering, waiting? just to see if these guys make any sort of mistake ready to pounce. Um, I believe, I don't, I don't even know where points go down to. I'm not very prepped for this series <laughs> as a commentator. This is the third round. I haven't got a clue how the points work. Um, right, anyway, yeah, so Andy and JP, teammates, of course, at PSUK, not running the same, I don't think there's a team's championship in this series. They're not directly 
uh, working together for this one as you can tell from the different liveries but uh, I mean it's always awkward when you're racing a teammate especially especially for uh, I've, I've forgotten who it is already especially for JP who's got his team boss in Andy right behind him it's um, maybe not the most serious of discussions but discussions might be had afterwards if Andy feels like JP has held him up at any point in this race and now we can see them across in the distance once again with Andy just uh, I know it's, hard, it's hard to tell with some of these game game camera clip uh, replay camera camera angles as it were yeah again i know what i mean it's all right uh nathan since getting past jp seems to have pulled a little bit of a gap but the three behind have now tightened up and he's still sticking on a pretty consistent gap jp not liking that section at all getting sideways again through there and having to cut the apex to make his make his line work and andy uses that as an opportunity to go up the inside into the right hander where jp was overtaken on the previous lap definitely a weak section of track for jp there and uh i, I mean if he's not careful, he's going to be losing a third place because, as I mentioned, organic beanpole right there, actually looking to the outside. Maybe if he can get a decent cutback line or just a good exit from this corner in general, will we see organic beanpole go on the attack into the hairpin? I think we will. Has he got an overlap? He's almost got a... Oh, has he sort of got an overlap a little bit? JP goes a little deeper. Beanpole slotting in behind. JP taking that tight defensive exit. Where is beanpole? Just dropped a little bit back during that corner. And uh, maybe JP suddenly starting to think it, it really is these fine margins. You move slightly closer to Andy and he can think about attacking. He can maybe, maybe make half a move, drop back half a car length, and all of a sudden he's got to focus on defending again. Very different lines from the three drivers there through that uh, GP chicane. And hard to tell which works it out. Andy going to very defensive very early, but then switching back to the racing line, opening up the inside, almost encouraging JP to go for a move. And I think we have seen one, just not on camera. Because I saw the ticker flick. I think JP might have outbraked himself, maybe, because he's. I'm sure he was briefly ahead of Andy on the ticker. But as we next see him, he's more, again, defending from Beanpole. And it's just. Oh, I should have gone back on board <laughs> these replay cams. More interesting for this sort of area of the track when you can see what's going on as a, you know, broader perspective. But as soon as you get to that last corner, it's like, no, we don't want to show you what's going on. We're Forza. Of course, we can't be a good all-round package. There's got to be at least one glaring error in every track, race, car, whatever. We do love it, though. Wouldn't be fun if it was perfect. Oh, and don't mind me having a nice swig of McColl Pepsi Max. Not sponsored. I just like Pepsi Max. Right, Andy, broken away a little bit from JP, who's who does seem to be a bit of a cork in the bottle with these guys. He was uh, overtaken by Nathan, overtaken by Andy, and he's once again defending from Beanpole. Similar setup to how they were at the previous lap into that corner. Beanpole slightly on the outside, but not really being able to make a move. Did he set up for a better exit this time, though? So we saw him take very different lines into the into the chicane that's coming up. That may be a um, opp opportunity to overtake if he gets it right. Let's go back on board. Oh, that's... Not the kind of outbreaking manoeuvre you want to do, Beanpole. If you're going to do that, you got to hit him one side or the other, not not straight into the back of him. Easily done, but uh, again, just puts him a couple of car lengths back and likely to take another lap or so to catch back right up. Oh, Andy, very deep into the chicane there. and I'm, I'm, I'm just tentatively expecting this to settle down for a lap or so. So let's go back to the front and see what's going on. Uh, we've got Hydra pulling a gap in the lead now. We've got Knock Hill in second with Mr. Ferg's in third. Is this the right way round they were um, earlier on? And DDM Drifting doing some DDM Rallycross once again in the background. Uh, still ahead of Leachy, it looks like, with presumably Rye further back in P6. Uh, let's go and take a look. Yeah, Leachy is currently still P5. Not necessarily close enough to be putting the pressure on Drifting at the moment. Um, sorry, that's not what I meant. Not, not necessarily close enough to be actively going for the overtakes but definitely close enough that the pressure is on DDM Drifting. Just, you know, any sort of small mistakes and all of a sudden Leachy will be there to capitalise. Um, perhaps a similar story with Mr. Ferguson not kill up, up, up ahead, although I think they are slightly closer than these two are for fourth and fifth. Let's keep chumping back. So we've got still CCX right in P6, dropping away from the battle that he was in earlier. And we've seen an we've missed an overtake between JP and Beanpole. Let's go and jump on board with these guys. They're side by side through the hairpin again. Beanpole... He's, he's had three attempts at that now, having overlap on the way into the hairpin. And this third time lucky for him as he uh, finally makes the move stick. Well, not not in that hairpin, but uh, he managed to get alongside on the exit. 
and has got the move done round down the S's, which is not an easy thing to do. We only caught the end of it, but it looked like a pretty decent overtake. Obviously, we didn't quite see what happened before, so I could be eating my words if I saw it from a different angle. Who's that we got over there? SLS Nathan really dro dropping these guys in P8 now. Um, who was it in P7 earlier that we talked about? Uh, PSUK 4s are having a very lonely race, I think I mentioned in P7 earlier. If Nathan's pulling away from these guys as emphatically as it seems, potentially could be... Oh, no, Andy's lost it into Turn 1. What a drift. That was one hell of a save, and he still makes the apex of Turn 2. Runs wide a little bit, but wow, that's very fortunate not to end in a much bigger accident. He didn't spin, he didn't hit the hit the um, barrier on the left-hand side, as you easily can do up the hill. I fell foul of that. Check out uh, one of my videos on my YouTube channel if you want to see a really big crash there. I believe it was uh, the VGN DTM series. I was following, I believe it was BP Solo, though I'm not, might be, I might be not, uh, that might not be right. I was following him very closely around turn one and two. He managed to clip the barriers and all of a sudden I had a BMW in... No, it wasn't a BMW. I was in the BMW. I had now for a Mayo in my windscreen. That was really fun. Anyway, while I'm going off on a tangent, Organic Beanpole is going off on the attack on Andy for P9. Uh, it was Andy's mistake that, sp well, that sparked me off on my tangent. And it's his mistake that has allowed Organic Beanpole to close right up to the back of him. And we can just now watch the battle unfold in front of us as we ride on board with JP. Wait, is this JP? I think it's JP. Yeah, it is JP. Oh, Organic Beanball looking up the inside there. Locking the brakes so he doesn't run into Andy, though. And that was a very, very tight one. And once again, I am just going to risk... Actually, I'm not going to risk jumping off. I'm just going to watch through the um, ticker. Uh, Jello has unfortunately disconnected from this race that was the black screen we had at some point earlier just be a bit wide through there so we've still got hydra knock hill and fergs fergs about half a second or so away from knock hills that's relatively close uh drifting leachy rye uk ps uh, forza uh, ps wait i've got that completely wrong ps uk forza <laughs> and now i've lost my whole train of thought all relatively spread out i do believe this this battle for ninth tenth and eleventh is the closest the track there we go so two seconds back to second, another second back to third, fourth was a bit off, fifth 1.6, sixth 4.2, fours are five seconds, and Nathan 3.7. So they're definitely very spread out in that sort of fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth mark. And then all of a sudden, ninth, tenth, and eleventh, and we're separated three cars in less than half a second. So this is the place to be. Organic Beanpole looking up the inside, maybe, around the long left hander. Andy gave him room initially, but there's a bit of contact between the mid corner. They're still rubbing wheel arches, and again on the exit, don't run each other wide chaps you don't want to end up on the grass this has given a great opportunity for JP to send it on both of them is he going to go for it he is he's last on the brakes but he's going to overshoot the corner no he's not he's just about sort of kept it acceptably oh wait, it wasn't an excess amount of contact was it but I mean there's definitely was contact it was a nice move on uh, on Andy Beanpole going for that sort of later turn in cutting back to the apex I don't think was necessarily aware that JP was there and there was a little contact between those two guys as well but it was a fantastic opportunistic move by JP to gain not one but two positions into that very tight hairpin where we just we just haven't seen cars really be able to get moves done it's in fact it's only really the three car battles where something has happened we saw the same for first second and third earlier on in the race and uh, now for ninth, 10th and 11th a, a similar sort of thing really speaking of first second and third Let's just go back and check in with the guys at the front. Ha they won't, They have spread out, as I uh, mentioned, by looking at the ticker. Fergs especially really dropped off the back of Knock Hill since we last checked in. And Drifting, actually probably closer to Fergs than Fergs is to Knock Hill at this point. How's Leachy getting on? Leachy, of course, putting the pressure on Drifting a lot in the early stage of the race, even getting past him. Uh, I think it was on the first lap and held that P4 for a good number of laps. In fact, from here, those three almost look all quite close, but... Uh, Nothing compared to the battle for 9th, 10th and 11th. We've got... Uh, oh my days, that's a big gap from Rye to Forza and then from Forza to Nathan. Just sort of flicking through, see how everyone's getting on. And then, of course, we jump back to that battle. <laughs> 9th, 10th, 11th. Uh, is this the order we left them? I think so. This time last lap, that the, the uh, positions changed. But uh, all status quo, they head around the tightest corner on the track on this lap 12 of 15. Let's check in with who we got slightly further back as well. We've got Ziplant in P12. Not having much fun through that uh, hairpin there. And I believe he's last, yeah, he is last of the runners at the moment with the Jello disconnect. And uh, he's still got quite, yeah, eight seconds behind Andy now.
is uh, not having his best race of the season so far, that's for sure. Maybe, as I mentioned, just struggling with this particular car. This, oh, Well, maybe not the car, because he's had a couple of rounds to get used to it, but this car in combination with this track, or maybe he just doesn't like this track in general. It's uh, one of those that definitely splits opinion. Back on Forza 6, before they sort of fixed the uh, chicane that sort of forms the second to last, third to last corner, um, that used to be ridiculously tight, and the track was basically unraceable just because of that one corner. But uh, with the nice big curves they added, I actually quite like it. it. Takes off the more demanding bit of the S's, adds another overtaking opportunity. But uh, as I mentioned earlier on in the race, I do prefer to take the big full hairpin that, well, I suppose would technically be the second to last corner because you've then got a kink. But um, yeah, in instead of taking the hairpin before the pit entry, if you carry on down past the pit entry and take the nice tired in or walled in uh, hairpin, I think that adds yet another bigger breaking up zone to uh, have a bit more potential overtakes happening but uh, I think it's, it's just a good enough compromise for now um, I know from speaking to uh, some of the drivers that are practicing in the week this particular corner it's so tight in these front wheel drive cars you just can't help but get the wheel spin uh, going out, the, out of the corner as JP wonderfully demonstrates for me right on cue but it's just not the quickest way to do it really as we can see uh, I can't I forgot who, organic bean pile there we go uh, <laughs> really putting the pressure on him having a better exit and that's the different line we're seeing with taking different amounts of curbs on the way in and out and uh, JP definitely hotter on the way in but organic bean pile with a, a good exit he's going to try and get a bit of overlap now and see now if they didn't break here if they kept going it'd have been that little bit further alongside maybe could have stuck it around the outside a little better or been paired a position to set up for a cutback but as it is that one's just that little bit tighter and sooner and slower and just oh, I'd, I'd, I'd really enjoy this layout if it if it gave us the full hairpin as well but it's not dissuading oh being pulled from having a go getting uh, having a look up the inside into turn one and then setting up nicely on the exit of turn two but JP just about hasn't covered for now and this is now the penultimate lap of the race so if he wants to get that P9 he's going to have to do it sooner rather than later is Andy still hanging on Andy's dropped off the battle a little bit down in uh, P11 now. Um, it's just two first places, twice the win. That's how it, that's how it works, isn't it, Andy? Oh, right. Uh, I think we're going to stay on board with this battle till the end of the race. I think um, the rest of the positions are pretty much set. I'll, once again, I'll just keep my eyes off the racing and uh, looking at the time interval as we head out. Yeah, all of the top four at least a second or 1.2 apart. Uh, 1.7, 6.3. Yeah, the gaps are massive all across the top eight. So minimum of 1.2 seconds between each car. And then uh, we jump to this battle where there's 0.2 seconds, or less than that now, between JP and Organic Beanpole. Less than 10th and a half Beanpole looking up the inside. Oh, someone's made a mistake. We've got PSUK uk Forza now just ahead of us. I wonder if he's had an unsettling moment through the fast S. Is JP having an unsettling moment on the exit of the chicane? And once again, we saw this last lap Beanpole managing to get the better exit. Trying to maybe chase that inside, but JP covers it well. Beanpole breaking slightly later this time. Can he go all the way around the outside? I don't think he can. The corner's just too tight. There you see JP getting on the power early. Maybe a bit too much wheel spin, but he's put himself on the inside for turn one. I'll tell you what, though. I wonder if JP's running a bit more aero, because he seems a lot slower as he, as he, in the, uh, in sort of, I suppose not really big straight line speed areas, but JP wanted to come on the attack immediately. I'll tell you what, if I do that one, or, no, not that one. I'll say, oh, what's going on there? What have I done? Oh, I've changed car. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> oh, I don't like these settings. I shouldn't have tried messing with it. Let's just go back on board with US PSUK Forza and look back at the battle for P9. They're so close. I want to get on board with them, guys. Let's back, back with Beanpo. Let's just jump to the replay cameras for... This is now the last lap, so... Oh, for pity's sake. There we go. All right, let's see if we can watch and see what happens. Uh, but Impol currently sitting in P9. JP has been there for the last couple of laps. This is now the last lap. And who's going to win in this battle for more points? In And uh, the honour of having a single digit finishing position as well. Something, something I mentioned earlier. I don't know. I don't think that's really a thing. You, you say a top 10 or a top 5 or whatever, but top 9? Just because it's a single digit? I'm not sure that's really much of a thing right come on we're heading towards that horrible bit so we'll jump back on board with jp switch to the game camera and organic beanpole getting loose through the chicane jp's right on his bumper but again just doesn't get as good of an exit as organic beanpole does in front of us 
and despite having quite a big gap, he, de he decides to go defensive, really putting JP off of a big dive. So can JP set him up nicely on an exit? Beanpole taking that tighter line, JP running wide, and just Beanpole can do that, and JP just doesn't seem to be able to, as we've seen the last couple of laps. And they come across the line, that's where they finish. They've had a great battle, really entertained us through the second half of the race. And uh, that's the end of that one. And now I and you can go and have a nice break for a couple of minutes before the next race. So once we're back in the lobby, I'll show you the previous race results as soon as they're available. So you can browse through the standings, but I'm pretty sure we all know them by now because they were just so spread out. We had Hydra take the win with not kill in second. Uh, Mr. Ferg's in third place, DDM Drive in fourth. Leachy in fifth with, I think it was Pish, UK Forza in seventh? Yes, because then, no. Who am I forgetting? CCX Rye in sixth. No, fifth. Yeah, no. This is why I shouldn't, shouldn't try and remember things. Hydra, not kill Fergs. Drifting, Leachy, Rye. Nathan must have got past Pish, UK Forza when we saw Forza make a mistake. I wonder if there might have been... Actually, I would say I wonder if there had been a bit of contact between them, maybe, with an overtake attempt, but we never saw the gaps really be small enough, unless I really did miss something, which is obviously completely possible. Can I see the previous race results yet? No, I can't. So, yeah, we would have had Knock Hill... Not Knock Hill. SLS Nathan in 7th. PSUK Forza 8th. Organic Beanpole won that battle for ninth ahead of JP and Andy with Leachy in 12th being our final finisher of the race with an unfortunate disconnect for uh, Jello. Uh, technically, well, not classified 13th, but yes, I won and only disconnect for that race. So, yes, I will be taking a break because my voice is going already, so I need to go and get another drink. I'll catch you soon for race two.